like money, motherfucker? Money be green. Money feel like money. That shit look green to you? All right, so we got to start off with the fight that everyone's talking about. We'll get to the nerdy fight a little bit later, but <laughs> I'm talking about Jake Paul and Tommy Fury. So let's take a look at the odds for it because the line has actually moved. So Jake Paul was a favorite. He was a minus 160 and Fury was a plus 125. That has actually moved. Now Jake Paul is a minus 180 and Fury is a plus 140. He's the underdog in this one, Tommy Fury, but the favorite outcome is Jake Paul to win at decision at plus 180, and a Jake Paul stoppage would be a plus 220, and Fury, well, he's the underdog, so a decision win for him is a plus 500, and a stoppage win for him is a plus 280. Brian, tell me how you're going to be betting for this one. This is excruciating. Um, I've gone back and forth. No, seriously, like I've gone back and forth. Uh, on this fight for a minute now. Um, and ever since it got announced, I've always had the sort of feeling that Jake Paul's going to win this shit, isn't he? You know what I mean? Because I've been one of the people saying, wait till he fights an actual boxer. And then they handpicked Tommy Fury, which you got to raise your eyebrow a little bit, right? Even though Tommy Fury is a half brother of Tyson, cousin of Hughie, son of John, he's not necessarily like, the most high level boxer there is to 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 put it that way and if you watch him fight you'll know like he's flawed he's still very young and he can get better i'm i hope that he does take jake paul seriously though because if i if he does then he could actually win this fight but i've been leaning jake paul by knockout ever since it's got announced which you can still find at plus odds i'm trying to remember the exact number but on like Bet NGM, for example, Jake Paul was as low as like a minus 143 favorite. Tommy Fury was plus 130 straight up by knockout. It was around plus 200, plus 220 or so on DraftKings. So depending on where you look, you could actually find good odds on this. Um, it's not the favorite. Like the, the books expect Jake Paul to win uh, a narrow decision. And in looking at it, like you look at um, Jake Paul's resume, which we've talked about. Ben Askren is there, Nate Robinson, Tyron Woodley, you know, guys who don't box. And the best guy that he beat was Anderson Silva. But when you watch Anderson Silva, who was 47 years old at the time, he looked better than Tommy Fury's last opponent, who was like 10 and 2, right? And Daniel, whatever his name is. And Tommy Fury, if you look at his resume, I'm trying to find the exact stat that I pulled out. But there are a lot of guys. Okay, here we go. Fury's opponents were a combined 14, 175, and 5 with six knockouts before his last fight where he beat a dude who was 10 and 1 at the time. I don't know how he got to 10 and 1, but he's 10 and 1. And, you know, you've seen this in UK with UK boxers like Liam Smith, Dylan White, and Joe Cordina. Like, seriously, you'll see them early in their careers. They'll beat guys who are legitimately 2 and 43 and 9 and 49 and 7 and 30. So this is part of the UK sort of process. And it happens in America too. Like you look up some guys, like they have these guys on their resume. But ultimately, like I just think Jake Paul is going to win this. And if you ask me what I think is going to happen, I think Jake Paul wins by knockout. But if you ask me what I want to happen, that's a different discussion. Yeah, I mean, that's a discussion that we probably won't have because we're trying to make, obviously, us all against Vegas, right? That's what we want to see here. <laughs> The way that I'm going with this fight, I've been, it's been hard for me to pick which way I want to go because you kind of mentioned it. Jake Paul handpicked Tommy Fury. And what does Jake Paul want to do? He wants to win. So it's very interesting that he handpicked Tommy Fury. And I feel like who wants it more? That would be Jake Paul because if he wins this one, he's actually going to be ranked in the cruiserweight division. So he really wants this because he doesn't like the fact that he's being called a YouTube boxer. He wants to be taken seriously. And don't get it twisted. I do appreciate the fact that, you know, he has really supported women's boxing and everything that he's done. And I'm I don't I'm not mad at him trying to get the bag. No way. But in this fight, he's fighting a guy, Tommy Fury, who actually has a pretty good jab. Right. But Tommy Fury doesn't have devastating power. And we all know that Jake Paul has this right hand. The one thing that I did notice, though, is that Jake Paul hates to fight on the inside. Every time a fight is on the inside, he'll tie you up. 
he's not comfortable fighting on the inside. He doesn't want to bang with you on the inside. Yeah. So I think if Tommy Fury tries to bang with him on the inside, maybe he'll have a little bit of luck there. But I think whoever establishes the jab first is possibly going to win this fight. The only thing is Tommy Fury, and we talked about this, Brian, is he leaves his chin exposed at times. Mm-hmm. And I think Jake Paul is going to be able to probably land that right on him. How good is his chin? We haven't seen too much of Tommy Fury. Of course, he has an amateur record. I think his best win on his record is probably Anthony Taylor, maybe. And I think that was, if I'm not mistaken, on the Jake Paul, Nate Robinson undercard. I could be wrong, but it was on one of the Jake Paul undercards, which that fight was on. And that's probably like his best win. But as you look at his record, I mean, Tommy Fury, what is he? He's like eight and oh, four of those wins coming by way of knockout. So right away, you kind of know, yeah, he has a 50% knockout rate. But early on, if you got power, you're usually like knocking out dudes left, right and center. So he doesn't have that devastating power. So I'm going to roll with Jake Paul in this one because I think he specifically handpicked Tommy Fury so he could possibly knock him out and get to, you know, be ranked in the cruiserweight division. And I actually think Jake Paul has a pretty good chance to knock him out. And on those odds, if you're going with the stoppage or the knockout, it's a plus 220. And that's what I would probably roll with. But also there is some value at taking Jake Paul uh, by decision at plus 180 as well, if you think Tommy Fury can handle his power. Yeah, and I will note that Tommy Fury has a four-inch reach advantage, and he better use it. I didn't like how he looked in his last fight, uh, just in terms of like what you said, keeping his chin in the air. I think his opponent has his chin more tucked than Tommy Fury did, as a matter of fact. And if Jake Paul, nothing else, he's going to have that right hand. To your point, with Anderson Silva, whenever Anderson Silva, because Anderson Silva was actually trying to fight on the inside, he would tie him up try to fight off a distance. Jake Paul actually has a decent reach for somebody who's 6'1". He has a 76-inch reach. But Tommy Fury has an 80-inch reach. And he has a good jab. Like, that's one thing I'll say. He has to use it. I just feel like there's going to be spurts where he gets overly emotional and tries to bang, and I just don't think that's going to go well for him. Um, but listen, man, he better win because he's a Fury, and they might disown this dude if he doesn't. <laughs> and yeah. for Jake Paul, like, I just... I, I fear what would happen if he won this fight. It's going to be a lot of what are you going to what are they going to say now? Da, 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 da. And it's like, yo, to be honest, Tommy Fury is not like the sort of gatekeeper of all things boxing here. Like he's <laughs> he's not fighting on behalf of the entire sport. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's also like for such a long time, I'm like, why doesn't he fight a real boxer? What's going to happen when he fights a real boxer? But like. We kind of had this conversation with, uh, uh, you know, one of our good friends from Fight Hype, Ben. And he's like, unless Tommy Fury got some new skills in his bag, I mean, I don't know if he's going to beat him or not. So I think Jake Paul, once, if he does beat Tommy Fury, we're not going to hear the end of it. He's going to be a real boxer. And I want to see him in the ring with better competition then. Because this is a step up. He's gotten better. That's the thing, too, with Jake Paul, though, is you have to admit that he has gotten better every fight. Sure. And he has stepped up his competition in every fight. Now, some of that competition were former MMA fighters that were retired, but nonetheless, it's gotten better than Nate Who weren't even strikers in their MMA career, Ben Askren, Um, and who were college wrestlers who became UFC strikers, which is way different than boxing striking Tyron Woodley. Uh, But yeah, I mean, look, he beat Anderson Silva, who beat a former world champion, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. However, we should know that kind of comes with damn near an asterisk because Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is a very complicated talking point if you know boxing at all. Uh, We could leave it at that. Um, And and then the last thing for me on this Tommy Fury thing, like I, I think he, I think he thinks that because he's a Fury, he's just going to walk in there and win this fight. And I don't think he's that much better. He shouldn't even be an underdog, really. But I don't think he's that much better than, than Jake Paul to be thinking that way. So I, I, well, here's Hopefully the thing. Hopefully, he takes it seriously, is where I'm at. We talk about pressure, right? So, Jake Paul wants this, right? He wants to be taken seriously. He wants to be ranked in the cruiserweight division. But I think there's more pressure actually on Tommy Fury coming into this one because he's got Agreed. the game to live up to, yeah. right? So, if he goes in there and he loses to Jake Paul, he's going to be seen as a joke. Yeah. He's never going to live that down. And it's always going to be a knock to him. And it goes back to the fact that, you know, he was on Love Island. He's not really into this. He's just doing this because of the name. If Tommy Fury actually wants to take boxing seriously, he has to win this fight. 
And if he wants other people to take him seriously in this sport and not just ride off the coattails of that name, I think he has more pressure on him. So it'll be interesting to see if he wants it more because we know Jake Paul wants this. Yeah. We know that he wants this. Either way, both of these dudes are going to make money. So I'm all with that. But we want to know here at the mandatory who you're rolling with. Are you rolling with Jake Paul? Are you going to be rolling with Tommy Fury? Let us know. This is an interactive show. You can hit us up on our social media platforms. You'll see the ticker going below the ways that you can connect with us. And also, I forgot to mention, if you like the content, make sure to hit that subscribe button make sure to hit that like button and if you got a couple of minutes also leave a rate and review now we got